So this algebraic geometry video will be about the degree of a projective variety. So um, suppose we've got a projective variety V contained in n-dimensional projective space. First of all, if V is a hypersurface, it will be given by the vanishing of an equation F naught up to X n equals zero, where this is a polynomial. And we can just set the degree of V equal to the degree of F as a homogeneous polynomial in the XIs. Um, well, that's easy enough. We would also like to define the degree of V if V is of co-dimension bigger than one. Um, well, you notice in this case, the degree of V is equal to the number of intersection points of V with the hyperplane section H. except it sometimes isn't. So we should say um, this happens most of the time. Um, and the reason why it sometimes doesn't happen is, well, um, first of all, suppose V is just a line. Then if you take another hyperplane section, it will have one intersection point with V. Well, except it sometimes doesn't because if you take V to be a line and the hyperplane section is the same line, then it has an infinite number of points of intersection. So that doesn't work. Um, similarly, if V has degree two, say it's some, some sort of conic, it might look like a parabola, then a generic line will have two intersection points with it. Um, but what about this line? So instead of doing that, we could take this line here and it's sort of got one intersection point of multiplicity to whatever multiplicity means. So defining degree to be number of intersection points is a bit iffy because you have to say it's usually the number of intersection points, but it sometimes isn't. The way people got around this was by saying it's the number of points of intersection with a generic hyperplane. And then you run into the problem of what does generic mean, and you find that generic isn't really precisely defined. What it means is a hyperplane is called generic if it makes everything work properly. Well, that's not really satisfactory as a mathematical definition. Um, but anyway, um, you can use this informal and non-rigorous definition to define the degree of V for any other variety. You say the degree of V, you want it to be the number of intersection points with a linear variety that means you know a, a line or a plane or a hyperplane or something of um, um, co-dimension um, given by the dimension of V. Um, so for instance if V has um, dimension two, then you'd take a linear variety of co-dimension two and count the number of intersection points with V. And again, you'd have this problem, you have to take the, um, the, the linear variety to be in sufficiently general position, whatever that means. So that was roughly the old classical definition of the degree of a variety, um, which is fine for informal arguments, but if you actually want to prove things, it becomes really rather tedious because it, there are all these exceptions and you're not quite sure when one of these exceptions takes place. And it turns out there's a much cleaner definition using the Hilbert polynomial. So the variety V corresponds to an ideal contained in the um, graded ring of projective space. So this is a, um, V, v is just the set of zeros of i. Let's call this ring R. And then we can look at R over i. So this is going to be a graded ring. And since it's a graded ring, it has a Hilbert polynomial. Um, 
So we, we define the Hilbert polynomial for a module over a graded ring, but we consider this ring as a, as a module over itself. So we get a Hilbert polynomial. And then the degree of the Hilbert polynomial turns out to be the dimension of V. So this is a theorem from commutative algebra. Um, that says it's very close. Well, it's very closely related to the theorem that says the dimension of a local ring um, is um, equal to the one plus the degree of the Hilbert polynomial of a graded ring m to the n over m to the n plus one. Um, I'm not going to prove this theorem in in this course because it's a somewhat technical theorem. Um, which is probably best left to, to textbooks on commutative algebra rather than lectures. But anyway, so commutative algebra shows that the degree of the Hilbert polynomial is just the dimension of the variety. Incidentally, this gives a, a, a fairly efficient way of calculating dimensions of varieties since Hilbert polynomials are very computable objects. Um, so, uh, so if the dimension is equal to D, then the leading coefficient of the Hilbert polynomial is, is going to be um, a times x to the d over d factorial for some integer a, as we saw last lecture. And this integer a is called the degree of v. Um, so a property of integer valued polynomials is that d factorial times the leading coefficient is always an integer, so a is an integer, and it's also fairly obvious that it's a positive integer because we said the degree of the polynomial was d, and we know that its values are positive for large values of x. So, the, so this is a positive integer a and gives a well-defined invariant of any projective variety. Um, notice this depends, when I say it's an invariant of a projective variety, it means it's an invariant of the projective variety together with its embedding into projective space. Um, so this isn't an invariant of the abstract variety V. Um, so let's see some examples. Let's take V to be projective space. Um, well, the, um, here the um, we just take the graded ring in n plus one variables and the ideal is just naught. So we're looking at the graded pieces of this ring here and you see the graded piece of dimension one. Well, there are n plus one things of degree one. There are n plus one, n plus two, over two things of degree two and n plus one, n plus two, n plus three over three factorial things of degree three and so on. So this is just the number of monomials of given degree. And in general, we're getting um, n plus k choose n, which is a polynomial in k of degree n, and it's equal to k to the n over n factorial plus smaller terms. So we see the dimension is equal to n, which is um, this coefficient here. And the degree is equal to 1, which is this coefficient here. We've got a, um, you remember, we multiply the coefficient of k to the n by n factorial. So n dimensional projective space does indeed have dimension n and degree 1 which is what we'd rather hope would be the right answer. Um, so now let's look at a hypersurface of a degree D polynomial F x naught up to x k. Sorry, up to x n. Um, well, here, the, um, we, we look, we're now looking at the ring kx naught up to xn modulo all 
multiples of f. So the um, Hilbert polynomial is going to be n plus k choose n. So th this is this is the number of monomials of degree um, k, and then we have to subtract n plus k minus d choose n. So these are monomials of degree k minus d, and we have to subtract those because any of these multiplied by f will be of degree n. So, so, so that's degree, sorry, degree k, not degree n. And now we can work out the leading coefficient of this quite easily. It turns out to be d times k to the n minus 1 um, over n minus 1 factorial plus smaller terms. So we find the dimension is the degree of k, which is just as well a hypersurface really ought to have dimension n minus 1. And the degree is equal to d, which is, again, rather fortunate. So, so this coefficient here does indeed turn out to be the degree of the polynomial f. So the degree defined by Hilbert functions is the same as the naive degree defined by the degree of this polynomial f. So this confirms that defining the degree by Hilbert functions does seem to give the answer we expect. Now let's look at a slightly more complicated example. Let's look at the twisted cubic in P3. So you remember um, if we take the um, ring of polynomials to be W, X, Y, Z for P3, then twisted cubic is defined by the equations W, X, so wz equals xy, x squared equals wy, y squared equals xz. So we want to look at the um, polynomial ring quotient out by the ideal generated by these. Um, so in general, um, what we can do is we can kill off any terms containing x squared, y squared, or xy, because we can turn them into um, um, smaller powers of x and y. So a basis for the um, quotient ring is just the set of monomials um, w i z to the k minus i w i x z to the k minus i minus one and w to the i y z to the k minus i minus one so these are degree k this is for k reasonably large greater than three or something i don't quite know how low you have to go so you see there are um Um, um, th 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 there are k plus 1 plus k plus k possibilities, which all together gives us um, k plus 1 plus k plus k equals 3k plus 1 as the Hilbert polynomial. I guess we could write a divide by 1 factorial there. And now as we see, the degree is equal to three. And while we're about it, there's an exponent one here. So the dimension is equal to one, which we already knew. So the twisted cubic curve in P3 has degree three. Um, incidentally, you notice this shows the degree is not an invariant of the underlying projective variety because the twisted cubic is isomorphic as a projective variety to P1 and p1 only has degree one so the degree does actually depend on the embedding of an, the abstract variety into projective space um, 
Um, there's an invariant of projective varieties, sometimes called the Euler polynomial of V, and this can be defined as the constant term of the Hilbert polynomial. And this has a remarkable property that xi of V depends only on the abstract variety not on the embedding into projector space. So you notice in the previous example um, that um, although um, the twisted cubic and P1 have different Hilbert polynomials, they both have the same constant terms. They both have the same Euler characteristic of one. Um, for historical reasons, um, people didn't used to quite use the Euler characteristic. They used minus one to the dimension of the variety times the Euler characteristic of V minus one. And this was called the arithmetic genus. Um, the reason for that is just people hadn't quite figured out what was going on in high dimensions where the arithmetic genus was defined. So they kind of got the definition a little bit muddled up. So the Euler characteristic is better than the arithmetic genus because it has the nice property that if you take the Euler characteristic of product of two polynomials, it's equal to the Euler character, sorry, the product of two varieties, it's equal to the product of their Euler characteristics. So that shows it behaves a lot better than the arithmetic genus. The Euler characteristic is called the Euler characteristic because it's actually the Euler characteristic of um, coherent sheaf cohomology of the sheaf of regular functions. So you remember Euler characteristic in cohomology is a sort of alternating sum of cohomology groups. So when we do sheaf cohomology, we will find that there's an, another natural definition of this using sheaf cohomology. Um, for example, we can work out the arithmetic genus of a plane curve of degree D. Well, the Hilbert polynomial of a plane curve of degree D is 2 plus K choose 2 minus 2 plus K minus D choose 2. And you can work out this as equal to 1 minus 2 minus d, um, 1 minus d over 2. So the arithmetic genus is this number here. And this is where the term arithmetic genus comes from, because in the special case of plane curves, the arithmetic genus happens to be the same as the topological genus um, defined by the number of handles of the underlying topological space. Um, incidentally, the Hilbert polynomial is more or less the only discrete invariant of closed subvarieties of um, projective space. This is a theorem due to Robin Hartshorn, the author of the book we're sort of vaguely following, who proved that something called the Hilbert scheme um, is always connected. And the Hilbert scheme is roughly a scheme parameterizing um, subschemes of projective space with the given Hilbert polynomial. And the fact that this is connected means that the Hilbert polynomial is essentially the only continuous invariant of things in projective space um, um, in the sense that um, if, if, the, if the invariant is a continuous function of the Hilbert scheme to a discrete set, then you, it, it's possible to write it in terms of the Hilbert polynomial. 